Oh my god, this is the worst day ever. Good morning and welcome to Whenever You Are. I am Bandit Hayes and today I'm going to be talking about Hatred. So Hatred is a game that got released last year and when it did it caused just a little bit of a ruckus because it is a very violent game and you have these very gory close-up deaths and you kill indiscriminately and people wanted to know you know is this going just a little bit too far? Is this game just a little bit too violent? And the other thing that happened is that Twitch outright banned it from their streaming service. In fact because it got banned by Twitch it quite literally puts hatred in the same category as suck my dick or die. I did look up suck my dick or die on the internet for um research purposes. Anyway it might actually have a pretty good story. The reason I'm talking about hatred is because I had this idea to talk about hard games. There were a series of videos where I talk about the hardest games I can find and perhaps, you know, maybe even beat a few of them. Now, I don't know how frequent these videos are going to be. Probably not every week, so I'm going to need some breathing time between each game. But I do intend on keeping them at least somewhat regular. Now, I started to call these videos hard on because my initial idea was the search for the hardest. But then I Hate Everything already does the search for the worst. And I thought, you know, it's just a little bit too close to that. And besides, when you hear the words, the search for the hardest you know let's be real you're not thinking about video games you know, you're thinking about you know naughty stuff but hard on completely innocent when you hear the words hard on you think hard video games because there's nothing else it can mean and with that said if you have any recommendations for hard games other than dark souls i know about dark souls it intimidates me but any recommendations put it in the comments or tweet at me and use the hashtag getting my hard on all right, so let's talk about hatred now. And I want to start with the story because there is a story that just isn't a plot. So you play as this dude and he is angry, like super angry. I mean, this guy is like next level grumpy smurf angry, right? This guy is so angry, emo kids come up to him and they're like, dude, chill. Things aren't that bad. He's that angry. And he kills people. That's what he does. He kills people. He kills civilians. He kills police. He kills armies. He just kills people. Every level, you kill people. You kill a bunch of people and you move on. Now, there's other things you do as well, like little tasks here and there, but pretty much the whole game is kill a bunch of people and you move on. That, that's the whole game. Each level, kill a bunch of people and that's it. But the thing is that you don't know why you're doing it. You have no idea why you're doing it. You're not told why you're doing it. So you don't know whether it's because he met Justin Bieber and Justin Bieber didn't want to take a picture with him. So now he's killing a bunch of people. Or maybe he sent off a bunch of tokens to Kellogg's and they didn't send him his special bowl. Or when it did arrive, it was broken. So now he's killing a bunch of people and we just don't know. I think the most likely scenario though is that nobody sucks his dick and now everybody must die. By the way, if you're wondering about the monochrome art style of the game, it's because they hate red. <laughs> You do have a bunch of different weapons in the game, but apart from the assault rifle, they all pretty much range between useless and nah. I mean, you have grenades, but you can't aim them, and when you throw them, they don't go very fast. So it's like, really, what is the point of this? There are vehicles in the game, but it's not like Grand Theft Auto where you can just get into any car you want and drive around in hatred. You can only get into a car if somebody left the door open, which kind of makes sense when you think about it, because the door's locked. You don't have a key. How are you going to get in? I mean, it's not like you have a firearm with you that you can use to break the window and unlock it from the inside so yeah some of the game design choices are very questionable and the way the story excuse me story plays out it's just lame and it's a shame because the idea of this person who's so angry he goes out on this indiscriminate killing spree is actually a really interesting idea and i'm not saying that they have to go super deep with it but he could have done something that just meant it wasn't so lame now in terms of difficulty i'd say that this game is challenging especially if you're playing on the high difficulty settings it's not a piece of piss you're gonna struggle with this game a lot now the main difference is between the lower difficulty settings and the highest difficulty setting which is called insane and appropriately named by the way is that in insane mode you don't get any respawn points so you've got a one life the whole level you don't get use of the mini map which lets you know where the enemies are and also you need to do executions to regenerate your health it doesn't regenerate as much in insane mode so there's definitely things in this game that make it a good challenge but above all of that the one thing in this game that makes it very, very difficult is the fact that the controls are absolutely shit. The character controls are so stiff, it's like trying to maneuver a truck without fuel. It's ridiculous. You're trying to turn around and it's just taking 
ages. And the amount of times you're trying to run through a door and you end up running into a wall or running to the side of the door and you're trying to move. Or when you're crouching and you want to go into a sprint, so you hit the L3 button and he doesn't sprint. So you're hitting it again and he doesn't sprint. Eventually he's like, no, now he sprints, but you're dead. And the vehicle controls are so awkward. It's all dual analog stick. And the way they've done it is that you always have to push up to move forward even if the vehicle isn't facing in that direction so it's so counterintuitive i would say this about the vehicle controls though at least they're consistent which is more than what i can say for the character controls which are not at all the thing is though you do actually get a little bit of a clue as to how much efforts they put into this game during the open cinematic where the character is show stocking up because he picks up his gun he picks up his ammo then he picks up his what, what, what exactly is he picking up? I mean, really, during the opening cinematic, you couldn't be bothered to code in whatever it is he's supposed to be picking up? Really? So in the end, you have a game that is hard, but way more frustrating than it is hard. And I think the only reason you'd ever have to play this game on the insane mode is if you actually are insane. But right now, it's on Steam going for £6. And for £6, to be fair, it's not a bad purchase. So to conclude, if you're looking for a challenging game and can pull up with really shoddy controls then definitely check out Hatred. If however you'd rather avoid games that piss you off so much that you'd contemplate going out on a real life killing spree, then perhaps not. And that is what I think of Hatred. What do you think? Suck my dick or die? Let me know down below and if you liked this video give it a like and share it amongst your friends if you did not like it then give it a dislike and share it amongst your enemies. Either way let me know your reasons in the comments, subscribe if you have not already. Thank you for watching and until whenever, if ever, let God deal with the things they do because hate in your heart will consume you too. He then breaks through that person, runs, jumps off the edge and starts flying. Well, of course, we know in reality, men don't fly like that. Men hit the ground.